You're listening to Radio Kidnappers, the voice of Hawke's Bay. This is a program called Homeopathy with Heidi, and it's our pleasure, as always, to have in the studio Heidi Beck from a Thrive Homeopathy in Napier. How are you going, Heidi? Yeah, very well, Ken. Thank you. Can and you believe? Thanks to all the listeners today. Yes. And you've been well? I have, I have. I've been staying fit and healthy and enjoying the sunshine. Which is a great segue into what we're going to be talking about today, isn't Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Our immune system and homeopathy and homeopathic remedies. Tell us exactly. a bit about it. Well, basically, my thought is that prevention is better than cure. Mm -hmm. And having a strong immune system is your best defense against any kind of infection or illness. And um, yeah, just staying healthy and... Uh, Homeopathy has lots of tools to either help you prevent illness mm -hmm. or if it does come in any shape or form to deal with it and to, to ease you through it and get you back to recovery as quick as possible. How do we start building a strong immune system? Well, I guess it's your lifestyle choices is the first. So, you know, it's the thing that everyone talks about, having a healthy, balanced diet and some vegetables and get yep. some nutrition because everything in your body sure. is based on biochemical reactions and you just have to have the basis for that to happen and that comes through your food. So my motto is always, <laughs> you are what you eat Yes. Um, and as healthy as the nutrition you put in yourselves. Then it's also about having the healthy balance in your life of work and play and fun and relaxation and enough sleep. Um, it's also about having enough fluids. It's also very important, mm. and I'm not talking about that good glass of wine no, and indeed. that cup of coffee because those will all dehydrate. So if you have a cup of coffee, and most people don't know this, you actually need another two glasses of water really? to compensate for that coffee. And um, then you need the water that you usually need anyhow. That so means I'd need an extra 16 glasses of water a day. Oh, don't tell me you're having that much coffee, I have Ken. at least that. I mean, I have four cups of coffee before 7 o'clock in the morning. Oh, naughty, naughty. Look at me. I'm a, I'm a machine. <laughs> <laughs> you are. <laughs> you mentioned that, that prevention is better than cure. Do, do homeopathic remedies come into that? I mean, I know we've spoken before that you don't necessarily need to take them all the time, but yeah. can you take them all the time like a vitamin? Or? No, no. The, the principle is like cures like mm -hmm. and the idea is that you use homeopathy when you are experiencing symptoms so those symptoms you know be it the headache be it the not being able to sleep or indigestion or constipation or diarrhea flu symptoms um, skin rashes so there really is is nothing that um, there isn't a remedy for mm -hmm. to address and um, as soon as that happens, that is actually the ideal when you um, take a homeopathic medicine. Yeah. But in saying that, we also do have homeoprophylaxis for um, supporting the immune system and getting that cellular memory mm. in the body, aware, making it aware of various uh, diseases and so that uh, the immune system will kick in quicker. So that is a, another form. As we record this program, we're heading to autumn and it's the season now for yeah. coughs and sneezes and colds and flus. And of course, uh, you know, the whole world is panicking about the coronavirus. So as we head into that season of coughs and colds, normally I would reach for a disparin. You wouldn't. Uh, what would you be reaching for? <laughs> Um, well, I actually wouldn't reach for the aspirin, and I've been reading a lot about the coronavirus. The aspirin actually um, will increase the risk of complications, mm -hmm. so that's really not the, the go-to. Besides, it's not going to really help, except that you don't feel the, the pain of your joints and, and so on, but it's not helping you actually get through flu symptoms. Um, the best thing to be prepared with is making sure you have certain vitamins. Mm -hmm. For example, vitamin C. You need um, a lot. And vitamin C is a water-soluble vitamin, so the body will not store it. So don't take that, that large amount in the morning. Um, the excess will be excreted through your urine or will cause loose stool, mm -hmm. even diarrhea. Sure. So it's a great remedy for constipation. Yes. <laughs> um, that's why that kiwi fruit or the, the grapefruit, often people say, oh, I have that every morning. Mm. It works well for me. So that's part of the, the reason. 
So you would spread your vitamin C doses out through the day, and you can take up to 3,000 um, milligrams a day as a preventative. Yeah. Um, so we're taking that as a supplement, but would it be yeah. would we not be better off just eating eat an orange or an apple? Or? Well, definitely. You know, we, we I grew up with the motto, an apple a day, keep the doctor yeah, away. Yeah, exactly. So, yes, definitely. But if you're not doing that and you're not feeling too good and yeah then you might have to take some supplement to to boost it is it true that if you get a cough or a cold or perhaps even the flu that really the bottom line is you just got to get a bed and ride it out i think a lot is about that it's not about throwing in an aspirin and soldiering on mm -hmm. you do have to give the body the rest that it needs and requires and we used to also say um it comes three days, it stays three days, it goes three days. So it's basically a week where you just step back and take it slow, have more rest, have a good broth, and take care of yourself. And um, if you do that, then support your, yourself. Now, the last time we spoke, we, uh, or we talked about your first aid kit, your homeopathic yes. first aid kit, uh, which is for bee stings and sunburn and all that yes. sort of stuff. Do you have a homeopathic first aid kit for coughs, colds and flus? I can put one together, but actually in the first aid kit is a remedy. It's called gelsemium, mm -hmm. and that's um, jasmine. So it's made from the flower. And the homeopathic process is, is quite complicated. It's a matter of diluting and succussing the substance, be it the plant, the mineral, or the animal. And then that is put onto a carrier agent, which is a milk sugar pillule or a liquid, yep. either or. So in the kit, you have these white sugar pills. And if you feel, you know, you've had maybe the experience a few days, you feel, I think I'm getting sick. I think mm -hmm. a flu, a cold yeah. is coming on. I feel really heavy and tired and oh, I just want to shut my eyes and rest. And if you get that sensation and you take that gelsemium, one or two, maybe even three mm -hmm. doses, then that might be enough to stimulate the immune system to start healing, rebalance and fight whatever the body is now being confronted with. Now I know that when you uh, have a consultation with someone, uh, that initial consultation can take you, you know, over an hour because yes. you get to know the person and you have a, a holistic approach to uh, the way you treat people. And um, you have mentioned in the past that if we've got a problem and you make a remedy of which there are over 4,000 remedies, yeah. is that the same with coughs and colds? I mean, you, that one you just mentioned, that's your sort of go-to, but are there variations of that? So yes, what's there the, are. it's often not one size fits all, does it? Yes, there are. And um, the whole international homeopathic community is, you know, giving webinars for colleagues. And I just watched one this week. And there is not one um, remedy that we would prescribe for coronavirus mm -hmm. or for the bird flu or for the SARS or whatever has come our way. There is sometimes the genus epidemic. That means that a whole group of people will be experiencing very, very similar symptoms of that virus. But in a different country, it might be slightly different, even though it's the same virus. So it would be a different homeopathic medicine that we would predominantly be using to address um, those symptoms of possibly coronavirus. Yeah. So how, yeah, how would you treat coronavirus? Let's, uh, let's approach that elephant in the room because everyone's, everyone everyone's is nervous about panicking. it. Everyone's yeah, panicking, yes. So what would, uh, you know, if someone came to you and said, oh, I've got it. Well, first of all, in the meantime, it's a notifiable disease. Yeah. So we still abide by that. Sure. And um, you address it just like any other cold and flu and virus that we would be treating and pneumonia um, is something that and that's the complication of the coronavirus mm. that homeopathy has been treating and addressing successfully for a very long time it's been around for over 200 years for example the spanish flu 1918 it yep. killed over 50 million people and the mortality rate was huge so 50 million worldwide, if you think about that, mm. those are just crazy numbers. And people who were seeing homeopaths, 
there was a 98% cure. Wow. So the death rate was 2%. Mm. And those were then often people with complications, elderly who had pre-existing conditions, underlying problems, heart problems, or, you know, yeah. were ill. So it exists, the studies and the proof that it works very well in um, treating the leptospirosis, which is a bacterial um, waterborne infection that was in Cuba, a huge study. Um, millions of people were given homeopathic um, leptospirosis as a prophylaxis to mm. prevent it. And again, that year, and the only reason they did that was because they ran out of vaccines. Mm. So they said, well, we can't give them vaccines, so might as well try this. And the death rate was much lower than in the previous years. So in saying how we would determine which remedy we would give, it's like the normal case taking. We look at the generals, so your age, your overall state of health and well-being, your um, cravings, your food cravings, your, um, yeah, just the general. Mm. Then we look at your mind symptoms, so how is this illness now affecting you? Do you want to retreat in a dark room and just ride it mm -hmm. out? Are you grumpy and, and irritable and even aggressive? Are you capricious, like you want this and then you want that and you're just commanding everyone around? Or do you want lots of attention and cuddles and a cup of tea and a blanket? So that would also be relevant for us to choose which of the remedies we select, as well as looking at the, the actual symptoms in detail. So for us as homeopaths, we don't just say, oh, you have a cough, so we need this remedy. It's what is that cough mm. like? Does it hurt? Where does it hurt? How does it hurt? So is it a constriction of the lungs? Is it a scratching in the lungs, like a rawness, or is it a stabbing? Um, is it a, the sound of it is irrelevant? So is it a barking or a dry or a hacking? And when you start asking people these questions, they're like, what? No one's ever asked? It's a cough. Mm. Well, no, not for homeopaths. And taking all that and more into consideration will bring us closer to which remedy you get. I was reading an article on statistics um, yeah. with regard to coronavirus, and they're saying that statistically very few children will likely die from it. Mm. And as we get into older age brackets, yeah, our chances of dying are much more increased. And you get to my age bracket, you think, oh my God, I better be <laughs> careful here. So would you then be uh, tailoring your homeopathic remedies to the age brackets? I mean, no, no it's just it's the same it's one. It's the same, yeah. yeah. It's the presentation of the illness mm. um, and also the stage. And we have, you did say we have around 4,000 remedies. So we would not be considering 4,000 remedies no for addressing pneumonia or cold and flu symptoms. There is a smaller group. It might be 60, 70 remedies that have an affinity to your mucous membranes respiratory. So automatically, the ones that are related to m bones, for example, mm -hmm. wouldn't even be looked at. Yeah. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. So now we've narrowed it down to these 50 or 60 remedies. Then there are remedies that are more in that first acute state that you give. For example, the aconite would be a remedy that we give if someone shows the first signs of cold and flu and possibly after being exposed to cold winds. Mm -hmm. Then that, that's a keynote. If you get that earache, a sudden earache or a sudden throat problem often before midnight so the time of the day or night is often relevant mm -hmm. for remedies and um, and it's intense then we would consider aconite or the ferrum foss so those are already two remedies that we look at more in the first stages mm. or that gelsemium mm -hmm. that I spoke of then there are remedies that are more when you actually now have that mm -hmm. cough that full-blown and it's gone from the sneeze to you know, the deeper, clear picture, that's another group, possibly another 10 or 12 remedies that we've narrowed down that for the coronavirus would also be uh, 
looked at. And then there are the other remedies that go even deeper when the complications have set in of the full-blown pneumonia. Mm. So why don't you just go in with the big daddy remedy? So if someone comes in the, in the early stages of, say, coronavirus or, or any other flu, why don't you just give them the, the like I say, the big daddy of, of the treatment? So instead of working backwards, why don't you just give them the, the best one you've got? Well, w that's what we do try to do always, yeah. but it has to be the best one for that individual mm. at that time, okay. and that's the problem. We are all different. And um, so basically what I'm saying, even if 10 people came with the symptoms and the virus mm -hmm. of corona, those 10 people still might be getting maybe three different remedies. Yeah. Two might get this remedy, three might get that remedy, three might get that, and there might be one that gets something else. At what stage will we change the, uh, the treatment? So I come in, I've got, the, say, the mild version of uh, a virus, and mm. how long would I give it before I say, hang on, it's not working, Heidi, let's, let's have the next one. Would that be a day, two days, three days? It can, and sometimes you change even within the day. For example, a belladonna, that is um, a severe onset, a sudden fever. So you might only need one dose of that belladonna, and then suddenly that fever will drop down. Mm -hmm. I don't need any more belladonna. Then you look at, so what comes up now? In homeopathy, we sort of address and treat what's in front of us. So now that fever is gone, so I don't need to worry about the belladonna, but suddenly now the cough has come up. So then I'm looking at remedies that will address the cough. So when you're working with people in, in flu states, for example, it might be that after a day, you get a call saying, okay, now I have this and this, mm -hmm. now my bones ache, and now I've, I've, I've got blood in, in my expectoration, so whatever I cough up has a red streak in mm -hmm. it, and I sweat it all night, and, and I have bad breath and, and white coating on my tongue. Well, that's a different remedy that would maybe be mercurius, for example. Mm. So we change according to that. Now, you mentioned those dreadful figures of the Spanish flu. Over 15 million people died. Mm. And uh, there is panic throughout the world with regard to coronavirus. Yes. And I know it's in every continent except Antarctica. And we are expecting it to come here. Yes. And I guess someone listening to you is saying, wow, well, it sounds pretty good. Uh, the mm. homeopathic remedies uh, you know, might well do the trick. So what are you going to say to people who are knocking on your door who are 100% at the moment? Mm -hmm. And they're going to say, look, I want to get prepared for it. You give me one of each remedy that you've got. I'm going to take it home. And when it finally gets to knock on my door, which by the sound of it's going to become a pandemic. Yes. Uh, what would you be saying yeah. to those people? Well, we can um, definitely, that's why I offer the first aid course, which, mm -hmm. you know, I, I hope people take me up on that offer and come. Because in between introducing all the remedies in the kit, I really explain in depth the history of homeopathy, how homeopathic medicines are made, the difference between potencies, because that's the strength of the remedy. Mm -hmm. So again, we'd be looking at different potencies at different stages and different um, overall vitality and in of the person and intensity of the symptoms. Mm -hmm. We address the potency, and I explain dosage. So when people have that better understanding and they go home with their kit, they then will know, okay, now I take a single dose, it's done that, it's done its deed, I don't need any more, I stop, I take that. So I would definitely educate my clients and not just hand them out this kit. Um, they do have to understand when to stop, when to take, because homeopathy is not like allopathic medicine, which does something. It forces the body to suppress, to manage, to control, but it doesn't cure or treat or heal. Mm. And homeopathic medicine is about stimulating you to self-heal. Are you stocking up? I mean, they're saying it's probably <laughs> going to be at least a year before there's a, a Western um, yeah. medicine uh, to fight this. Yes. Are you getting the extras in or have you got plenty? I've got plenty, yeah. and there are homeopathic pharmacies where we can get more. Um, yeah, we can't run out, so yeah. that, that's not the problem. Okay, we're just about running out of time. You've got a, a, a good, well, before we get to your song of the, of the week, uh, just remind our listeners, want to come see you for anything? For anything, just about viruses, yes. where are you? <laughs> 
I'm still in Napier yes. on Hospital Hill. Um, my contact is 021-335233. I have a Facebook page, Thrive Homeopathy NZ, and a website um, where shows and talks and blogs are uploaded. There's more information about homeopathy for you to have a look at. And that's thrivehomeopathy.co.nz. I meant to ask you one other question uh, before we get to your song, and that is that you often say that homeopathic remedies can be used as complementary um, yes, treatments yes. For, um, for what's going on. Is it the same? So if we're going to our doctor, we think we've got coronavirus and uh, mm. he's giving us this. Can we use the homeopathic remedies Absolutely. as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's my criticism towards the critics, that they seem to be so single and narrow-minded and aggressive about um, poo-pooing this mm -hmm. form of medicine that's been around over 200 years, used by millions mm. of people, successful studies, um, and successful treatment of epidemics from typhoid fever, yellow fever, meningitis, diphtheria, Spanish flu. All these things have been successfully treated with lower death rates than conventional mm. treatments and still they refuse to look at the evidence. They always say there is no evidence and uh, lay persons just pick that up and go and mm. run with that. So um, they seem to be thinking it's a choice either or but that's not what we're advocating. We're advocating we need to work together mm -hmm. for the best interest of the people who are unwell and to leave the ego out Indeed. of it and um, if it works it works and um, trying to suppress homeopathy and other complementary forms of medicine um, is quite arrogant and ignorant in my opinion and I just wish they'd back off they don't have to use it but they cannot refuse people the choice well said <laughs> thank you what's your song all right, well, my song is today with George Strait, a country musician, and Living and Living Well is the title of the song. What's your thought for the week? Well, life is not about waiting for the storm to pass, it's about learning how to dance in the rain. Good on you, Heidi, as always our pleasure. You look after yourself, we'll talk to you same time, same place next time. Thank you very much. Bye bye.